Atlantic bluefin tuna are stunning animals. Picture the most beautiful streak of blue and purple and uh, azure. Molly Lutkavage is a biologist at University of Massachusetts Amherst. These are torpedo-shaped fish. They can attain sizes of upwards of, oh, over 1,000 pounds. Their streamlined form allows it to swim in the ocean at sustained high speeds. Of up to 45 miles per hour, which raises the question, just where are these fish going? To solve this mystery, Lutkavage, other researchers, and various fishermen have been attaching electronic tags to wild bluefin tuna, little cigar-shaped computers that record the paths of single fish. Uh, Let's call it the daily life of a giant bluefin tuna. Here's an example. The path of this fish that you're about to see is driven by actual data from a young tuna. The fish was tagged off North Carolina in January 2003 by a research team that included Stanford biologist Barbara Block and Andre Bustani. We, I guess, refer to ourselves as Team Tuna. Bustani is an environmental scientist at Duke University. So essentially what drives the migration patterns for these fish are either food or sex. And when they're not thinking about one, they're thinking about the other. When Atlantic bluefin are young, they focus on food to grow quickly. This tuna here spent the winter off North Carolina feeding on a kind of herring called menhaden. In the springtime, as you can see here, it followed the Gulf Stream, making its way 1,200 miles offshore. And then in summer, when New England waters warm up, the fish will move in there and start feeding on sand lance and herring and then come back down to North Carolina in the winter. The path of this tagged fish so far wasn't all that surprising to the researchers. For decades, it was thought that there were two distinct populations of Atlantic bluefin, one in the western Atlantic and one in the eastern Atlantic, with little exchange between them. It's this assumption that's driven the management of these tuna since 1969, That is, two separate quotas for fishing, one for each side of the Atlantic, split down the middle by the 45-degree line of longitude. But we're seeing that it's much more complicated than that. Most of nature does not follow arbitrary lines. The tags show that these fish actually cross the Atlantic. So as this fish matures, what's on its mind at that point is sex. It's looking to find a mate. And to do that, it returns to where it was born, in the Mediterranean Sea. Here's our tuna swimming east in the late winter of 2004, away from North Carolina, north of Bermuda, across the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in the spring, and then into the Mediterranean by summer. Once these tuna reach a certain size, they often cross the ocean and return to where they were born to reproduce, either in the Mediterranean or the Gulf of Mexico. All this movement, it casts doubt on using the 45-degree line to manage tuna stocks. There's a need for a new solution, biologist Molly Lutkavage. I think there's a real urgency to understand where are the spawning areas, what is the age of maturity of Atlantic bluefin tuna. Without this information, it will be very difficult to judge what the state of the populations are in the Atlantic. So it's important to continue to study these fish and to fill in those gaps in knowledge. And these tags are a powerful way to achieve that. If fish were cars, the bluefin tuna would be the Ferraris. That's how sleek their lines are, and how quickly they accelerate, and how expensive they can be, especially at fish markets, like this one in Japan, where sushi lovers have long coveted the rich red meat of the bluefin. Here, a single bluefin tuna was once auctioned off for $175,000. Sales like those have painted targets on the backs of these great migratory fish. Bluefin that cross oceans now run gauntlets full of fishing boats, ranging from huge trawlers to small fleets that work together to haul whole schools of bluefin to the surface. Then there are the pirate fleets that use illegal spotting planes to find the fish and smaller boats to sneak them into port. 
fisheries biologists have been calling for restrictions on the global bluefin tuna catch for decades now. But the global organization that is supposed to set those fishing limits has left the status quo in place. And so, around the world, the bluefin catch is falling, especially in the Mediterranean, where it's falling so quickly that bluefin there may be headed toward extinction. For a time, it looked as if bluefin tuna might be saved by the trade group known as CITES, which uses trade restrictions to protect rare wild things like elephants and tigers. But then Japan and other fishing nations killed a plan that would have added bluefin tuna to the official CITES list of wild creatures put at risk by global trade. Conservation groups like the World Wildlife Fund say there has never been a more urgent need to recognize that bluefin are much more than seafood. They're also precious wild things that need to be protected now. Otherwise, it might not be that long before there aren't any bluefin in the fishing nets or in the waters underneath them. I'm John Nielsen. This is the World Wildlife Fund. We all know how good bluefin tuna is, and we all know how good it is in a well-done sushi. But it is because of this that the irresponsible attitude and the greed of so many sectors have depleted the sea, both in the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. We need to tackle this. We have been battling in ICAT, the regional organization, but also in the European Union member states, that the rules that are now being put into place are not enough to control this fishery. The stock is simply upper fish. There are no enough bluefin tuna for everybody. We need to stop that and we need to control and punish those that are doing the things badly. That's the purpose of the report we are presenting and that's the goal that we need to afford in a very serious manner. That's what we expect that not only the European Parliament but also the Member States will understand soon.